Hello everyone, let's talk about India's largest stockbroker today, Zerodha. You know, the place where you lose all your money. And we will see how they use Postgres. They published this blog in April 2021 to give us an insight on how they powered their console with Postgres. And console is like the central dashboard for all reporting and analytics for a Zerodha user. We are going to see some concepts from that blog post and which I thought was interesting and which you can learn from. So these three paragraphs essentially from their blog gives us some details about their usage. Now they store all the profit and loss statements, their reports and all the trading data on the on Postgres. And they, when they were writing this uh, blog post, I guess had 20 terabytes of data spread across four nodes. An interesting thing is that their database, actually this Postgres database actually acts as a data warehouse where bulk of writes are happening during the end of day, you know, after the markets are closed and they're getting all the data from the uh, stock exchanges. And they are actually serving 40 to 50,000 queries per second during the trading day. I mean, that's a great number and we'll try to see how they achieved it. First, let's come to the data schema. So they try to reduce the joins they need to do faster queries because you see, joins are too slow. And to achieve this, they have denormalized all their data, uh, which means they keep related data together in a table so that they don't have to reach out to another table and join that data. Though it means that they have to duplicate some data, they have taken this trade off. For increasing their bulk writing speeds even further, they have removed foreign keys as even having foreign keys slow down their writing. And remember, they are importing tens of millions of rows every night, um, which is a huge ingestion into the database. So writing speeds in bulk matter to them. Another fact is that the data is indexed on dates, which makes sense for most financial data. So they are kind of using Postgres as a time series database in a brilliant way. If you want to know more about time series database, by the way, look at my previous video. I'll uh, link it somewhere. So they partitioned their data monthly. And uh, when I say partitioning, I mean that it is, they are dividing a larger table into smaller table. So for each uh, particular month, they have one of these tables. They also saw that most user queries are coming for just the last month. And see, updating to a large monthly partition may be slow. Um, so what they do is they first update a temporary table for each day and then they asynchronously update the data in the monthly partition. As they have timestamp as their index, which is by itself a monotonically increasing value, they don't need auto increment IDs too. Um, uh, because they are optimizing for bulk writes everywhere, these auto incrementing writes will slow their uh, operations down. So removing them gives them faster writes, right? Next, they talk about vacuuming. So vacuuming in a Postgres is a process when the deleted data is actually removed from the disk. So when you delete something from the database, it is not actually removed from the disk. It is there. The data is there on the disk, uh, but it is marked as deleted. During vacuuming, the disk space is actually reclaimed. Now they have said that if vacuuming starts happening during that bulk ride they are doing um, every day, that would lock many parts of the database down and make the write slower. So they turn off auto vacuuming, right? They run vacuuming manually using the vacuum analyze command in Postgres every night to clean up their database. They also mentioned that if you have writes coming through frequently throughout the day, you might need more frequent vacuuming to keep your reads fast, but they have a different use case here where the majority, a vast majority of their writes come uh, at once um, after every market day. So different use cases, different design, right? Okay, um, let's talk about indexing now. They have highlighted that more than 97%, guys, 97% of problems happen in databases due to improper indexing. But they have also said that undue indexing is also a problem. See, when a when we put index on something, every time we write to the database, we have to update that index too. So that increases the write time. So they suggest to not use indexing for 
every query that you will do only use indexing keeping in mind of your most frequent queries if some queries there you are not doing very frequently it's okay not to index for that because sometimes even sequential scans are better than uh, um, index searches so you need to actually do explain analyze on your queries and understand that behavior better understand your data better to make these trade-offs the next suggestion they have for faster reads and querying is materialized views see uh, they say in their language uh, these are super helpful when a subset of data that uh, gets joined all over across the db and multiple tables frequently is slowing their selects in general so they can speed up those queries by building materialized views and using them in queries um, so this will avoid unnecessary materialization which means unnecessarily reading throughout the tables and doing those joins um, all that things as they say materialized views are snapshots of queries that are frozen in virtual tables and they are updated asynchronously so it's not that when you query that materialized view all the data will be prepared or all those joins will be done from the uh, background tables but all those data will be updated in the materialized view asynchronously so when you query you will directly get that uh, data from the temporary table or that uh, materialized view right okay let's talk about sharding now right so sharding means taking your database and distributing into multiple databases in multiple nodes so they were on a single node for a longest period of time but they have listed the reasons why they moved to a distributed database setup one thing is their nightly bulk write um, and the resultant vacuuming was getting too slow because they have one uh, node only the other aspect is that most of their queries are on the last month worth of data as i said before on the recent data but you see when in a single node case um, queries on for the recent data and for the old data are getting access to the same resources which is not fair queries to the recent data should get access to more resources because they are coming more frequently right so they have sharded their database this way um, all the new data is kept in larger nodes right all the old data is kept in smaller nodes and they are sharded according to the date because as i said timestamps are like the first class citizens in their uh, database so it's they partition um, shard everything according to the date and time right okay now we know how their sharding scheme is let's say how they are doing that so they are actually using a postgres extension called postgres fdw which means postgres foreign data wrapper uh, which lets one primary database to um, query from any external data sources so they are querying their primary database and that primary database is querying from the other shards right and they are using postgres um, fdw extension to do this and see another interesting thing is that they completed their migration from a single node to um, this distributed setup within two hours and that's just um, amazing right now another very interesting part they actually use postgres as a cache uh, as you can see they evaluated redis but it found that it's not a good fit for them because filtering and sorting among the data that is already there um, will be more difficult and it will just keep asking for uh, more and more ram so that's not the uh, what they want so what happens is when a query is uh, made they take the results of that query and put it into a new table into the hot cache database subsequent queries for filtering and sorting the data from the same user hits this same database table um, and we return that value without hitting the primary database so this makes those queries faster and to you know orchestrate all of this they created this library called sql jobber they wrote this in go i will link the um, github uh, in the description and they say that they actually took postgres to its limits because they had ended up having tens of millions of tables, right? I mean, I think that's what they're still having in their uh, prod setup. Who knows? Uh, maybe they have changed it. They end their blog post with some hot takes and I have kept some of them here. Uh, a common thing you will see is in their approach and uh, their uh, hot takes is they are against over engineering, which just increases cost and complexity. Instead, they try to keep things simple and cheap and adapt as they come. One example is they're not using any managed databases. They have their own, they run their own 
uh, databases on bare EC2 instances and they manage it themselves. And that actually keeps their costs lower. So the first point is that don't shard your DB prematurely. They sharded uh, their 20 terabytes worth of data of that DB without any changes in the schema. And I showed you they did ho the whole migration uh, in just two hours. And then they say that you need deeper understanding of your data and your business use case rather than the Postgres sharding or distribution um, things to make these trade-offs like um, CPU cycles and disk space. It will matter more on your data and your use case. And the last thing that they have highlighted is that most of the times the problems are with poor indexing and vacuuming and not distributed databases, right? So they, as you can see, they're favoring keeping things simple and sorting out fundamental problems first before going uh, whole distributed and sharded and all these things, right? At the end, they praise Postgres a bit by saying uh, that it is a rock solid database and they're right, it is uh, indeed a uh, rock solid and versatile database and it has been out there for a long time and it has been um, uh, at the top of its game um, since then okay so that's all i had to say do read the full blog um, if you want to from the description um, and this is all i had to say today um, so like the video and subscribe to the channel for more cool engineering videos and i will see you in the next one bye